Welcome to service number 97. And this is for the 5th of February 2023. Uh, today we're looking at Ezekiel chapter 35 in the Old Testament. And it's the, the punishment of the, the nation of Edom. Well, you've never heard of them because they got punished. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Anyway, a subtitle could be Blood and Guts in the Old Testament. Great stuff. But first we're going to have a song and, as usual, the chords and the lyrics can be found in the video description. Blessed is the one who has sought God and found him. Blessed is the one who takes God as his tower. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid You are to stand this day Tell everyone that the judgment is coming Tell everyone time is not on their side Tell them to pray Tell them to pray If they would stand that day Hear the Lord Hear the Lord Foolish the one who denies God is glory Foolish the one who believes every lie Will you believe, will you believe Truth should it come this day God will forgive if we turn to the Saviour God will forgive and will bless from his heart Those who believe Those who believe God will forgive this day Who has sought God and found Him Blessed is the one Who takes God as his tower Don't be afraid Don't be afraid You are to stand this day You are to stand this day The Lord spoke to me. Mortal man, he said, denounce the country of Edom. Tell the people what I, the sovereign Lord, am saying. I am your enemy, mountains of Edom. I will make you a desolate waste. I will leave your cities in ruins and your land desolate. Then you will know that I am the Lord. You were Israel's constant enemy and let her people be slaughtered in the time of her disaster, the time of final punishment for her sins. So then, as surely as I, the Sovereign Lord, am the living God, death is your fate and you cannot escape it. You are guilty of murder and murder will follow you. I will make the hill country of Edom a waste and kill everyone who travels through it. I will cover the mountains with corpses and the bodies of those who are killed in battle will cover the hills and valleys. I will make you desolate forever and no one will live in your cities again. Then you will know 
that I am the Lord. You said that the two nations, Judah and Israel, together with their lands, belonged to you and that you would possess them, even though I, the Lord, was their God. So then, as surely as I, the Sovereign Lord, am the living God, I will pay you back for your anger, your jealousy and your hatred towards my people. They will know that I am punishing you for what you did to them. Then you will know that I, the Lord, heard you say with contempt that the mountains of Israel were desolate and that they were yours to devour. I have heard the wild, boastful way you have talked against me. The Sovereign Lord says, I will make you so desolate that the whole world will rejoice at your downfall, just as you rejoiced at the devastation of Israel, my own possession. The mountains of Seir, yes, all the land of Edom will be desolate, then everyone will know that I am the Lord. Now, when you read the Old Testament, don't start it thinking that you're going to meet lots of nice people doing good things. And this is how we should all behave to one another. No, you're not going to find that. I actually thought that the very first time I, I picked up a Bible. That's what I expected. No, you don't get that at all. You get a lot of flawed people who eventually come round to the Lord's way of thinking and start doing things right. But initially, quite often, they get it hopelessly wrong. There is murder, there is mayhem, there's even rape on a few occasions. But just because these things are there doesn't necessarily mean that the Lord approves of these things. These are the things that Jesus came to try and help us get rid of. So, a few pointers before we start looking at the specific passage about all this murder and mayhem. First thing, a carpenter has to work with the wood that is available. Now, you might want to make a, a table out of mahogany or teak or even rosewood, that would be so lovely. But if all you've got is pine, you just have to make do and do the best you can with the pine, don't you? Right. And throughout the Old Testament, God is having to make do with sinners. Everyone's a sinner and God just has to try and somehow get them round to his way of thinking. So that's the first problem he has. The second problem is actually one that we create for ourselves. Uh, it's, it's all too easy to approach the, the, the Bible with a preconceived idea of what God would be like if we designed God. If we were auditioning for people to come and be God, we would have a list of things that they would do and a list of things that they would they would not do. And they would do all the nice stuff and they wouldn't do any of the, the nasty stuff. However, if you're a seeker after the truth, you have to approach a whole search for God with an open mind and and no preconceived ideas about what God must be like. Now, if you do that, you will find that God is a God of justice. God is fair. God is good. And God is occasionally not nice. Because being good and being nice are two entirely different things. I, uh, a few years ago, I was approaching the village with, with Isabel beside me in the car and uh, I just casually asked her, tell me dear, when was the last time you went to the dentist? <clears throat> and there was a long pause. And the answer was, 
it must be seven or eight years. <laughs> right. So I pulled into the dentist car park and I said, in you go, make an appointment for a checkup. Now, I was being good. But was I being nice? No, I wasn't being nice at all. Downright unpleasant, in fact. Yes, we need an open mind. And what we find is that God is not God the grandfather who dotes on his children. He's God the father who, when necessary, disciplines his children. Right. Next thing we have to realise is that um, mankind, uh, we're, we're a nasty lot. We really are. Now, the way war was done in, in in ancient times was you marched your army up to the, the gates of the, the enemy city and you demanded their surrender. If they didn't surrender, you had the right, once you'd won the victory, to slaughter everyone, man, woman, child, even the animals if, it took it, if you took it that way. And that actually continued even up to the times of uh, the English Civil War, Norman, uh, Norman, not Norman, Oliver, yes, him, Oliver Cromwell and all, all that lot. That was still in force up to then. And, and the, the idea of civilians not being military targets is, is actually relatively new. It's only two or three centuries old. And the idea that Oh, we have human rights and nobody should be allowed to do these nasty things to us. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, human rights are as arbitrary as the speed limit at the end of your street. Just pick a number, you know. Um, there, there's no intrinsic law that says the universe has to grant us human rights, whether you're a, a believer in God or you're an atheist. That's just a sad fact, isn't it? You know, it's like it's like if we all decided that gravity didn't apply to us, gravity would still apply to us, whether we liked it or not. So here we have this this nation of Edom, and over the the, the centuries they have been a thorn in Israel's side. They have constantly been trying to thwart Israel's plans and they have gloated when Israel themselves have uh, felt the, the, the lash of God's anger against them as in when the, uh, the Babylonians invaded and sacked Jerusalem and carted the folk off into exile. Oh, the Edomites were all what? ever so happy about that. And the Edomites are also guilty, you will notice, of coveting the Tenth Commandment. You shall not covet your neighbour's fill in the blank. Well, they have coveted and their coveting has, has on occasion led, led to violence. Now, God is very patient with people, but I have noticed uh, through history, if we look at history itself, and even in individuals that I have come across in my own lifetime, there comes a point where God may just wash his hands of a person or a nation. You've had all the chances you're going to get and then that's it. And I can think of two men that I have known that have been great churchgoers, but not actually Christians. And both had kind of similar... Well, they didn't die. No, they didn't actually die or anything like that. But they, it, it, it was like all the blessings that they'd had just suddenly left them because they consistently refused to admit that they were sinners and that needed saving by Jesus. Religion to them was just something you did. It's also, of course, one of the definitions of religion is it's something we do when God's not actually talking to us. <clears throat> yes. Anyway, this is the state that Edom find itself in. And uh, You'll notice, as I said that right in the introduction, well, where is the land of Edom? 
right? everybody's got to scratch their heads and look through ancient maps and to, to find it yeah, they're gone they're gone when God says he's getting rid of someone oh my he, he does the job properly now is there an application for us in this well yes there is one is is this warning that if you are just playing at being a Christian well beware if God's patience runs out you will rue the day and of course as a species and as nations before the Lord we have reached this point in history where we are not just offensive to the Lord because oh that has happened a million times before but we are, we are about to break the planet and he's not going to let us do that no no that's like the football teams deciding they're going to dig up the football pitch no you get sent off if you if you try that and we're at that stage in our existence so the message for today is concentrate the mind if in any way you are lacking in God's sight now is the time to put that right. Now let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Do not bring us to the time of trial but rescue us from the evil one. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and evermore. Amen. I have no being except